So well, welcome, Michael Corsentino. Uh, glad to have you here, man. So uh, it's it's where are you based out of? We'll let everybody know a little bit about you, and uh, we'll we'll jump into some interview questions. Sure, good to be here. Thanks, of course, for having me. It's uh, nice to uh, have the opportunity to chat with you guys. I am uh, outside Orlando, uh, and I am a um, fashion and editorial portrait photographer. I do a lot of traveling, um, and I do a lot of teaching as well. Some of which you guys may have seen. Awesome. Um, so we got you on here today. You're uh, you're always been a, a, a fan of Bond One, and uh, we got you on here today, not necessarily to uh, to talk about on one per se, but I've been asking questions um, in this series more on post processing. Sure. Because uh, I think it's just just to get an idea into how people see things. Everybody sees things different. That's I'm, I'm you're doing this this interview series. It's like I I, I see it more and more, but. Um, just to get some feelings from you on, on this overall post-processing, it doesn't have to necessarily be about an on-one app, but um, the first question is, uh, and this has always been a tough one for people, but fast forward five years, um, what do you think will have changed in, in post-processing? And I'll preface it by saying the, this question came to me from another interview that I did where we just got on a side tangent of talking about RAW and how six, seven years ago, camera raw was, it was, you know, it was like, oh, you shooting raw or JPEG? Um, because camera raw and the camera raw interface was so ancient in some ways. Photoshop was so robust and the camera raw interface had so few settings in it um, that raw was almost this weird thing. It's now camera raw has got so much in front, you know, camera raw, capture one, Lightroom, whatever it happens to be, there's so much. So that's where the question came from. I thought, you know, my, I'm curious to see five years from now, where do you think we'll be? Uh, well, I would say that there's so much happening in the mobile space that I would imagine that more will be happening in the mobile space in terms of raw. Right now, there's a lot that you can do with JPEG post-processing uh, in the mobile space, but not so much in the raw space just because of, um, you know, space constraints, memory and such, uh, hardware-related issues. Um, but I, I would think that, you know, as things progress, hardware will get more, uh, be more inclined to handle that kind of processing, have that kind of space and processing power um, that would make RAW more of a reality on mobile. And I know that I'd like to see that. That would be helpful for my workflow. Good, uh, good, great answer on that. We I talked mobile with one person, but um, it's, uh, it's. I, I think you're dead on. I think, I think that's definitely going there. Um, so. Next question, more on your your post-processing style and feelings. Um, so are you of the anything goes? Um, you know, I, I know your your work is very is very client-based. Um, are you of the you're not necessarily and I say I say very client-based as opposed to, you know, I interviewed a landscape photographer where that's more I'm going to go out, take a picture. I'm going to process it to my style and then go out and sell it. It's not necessarily one client, but you're very client based. And even your personal work, are you, anything goes, you'll replace a sky, you'll drop a head on a different person, or do you have limits on there? Uh, I'm not, I'm not anything goes. I definitely have limits. Um, it's sort of hard to define my, my best, my best measure and my best rule of thumb is let taste be your guide, you know, and, and don't, uh, the main thing that I want is I never want the effects to dominate the image. I want the image to lead always and the effects to be supporting whatever the, the mission of the image is rather than the other way around. I never want someone to look at an image and go, oh, that's bleach bypass. You know, I want them to say, hey, cool image. That's really edgy or trendy or whatever. You know, it, it's got a certain feeling. It's dark and you know, moody or it's light and airy or whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't want the effects to lead. I want the image to lead. All right, cool. So, can I, so let me ask you a side a side question on that because I know you do you do most of your work is done for clients. Um, have you ever said no to a client request that you thought would really hurt hurt the image? I have luckily I haven't really had to. I mean, I, I've said. Um, I've given them guidance and I've said, I don't think that's the best way to go. Let me show you what I would do first. And then typically they like that, but more often than not, people are coming to me because they like what they've seen. So they, they have their expectations have already been set. They kind of know 
they're coming to me for what I do. Okay. Um, and that makes it a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, there are times when I'll have to say, well, you know, that's not really what I would suggest. Uh, let's try this. And sometimes, you know, oftentimes, you know, your clients, uh, they want the images and they want to bring it to their retoucher or their people to do the post on it. So sometimes it's out of your hands and it just has to be a reality of the business that you're in that, you know, it's a job and you're collecting a check and you're making a living. Uh, and that the work that you would do under the strict guidelines of what appeals to you is what you show in your portfolio and what you hopefully attracts clients and hopefully they want that same kind of work. Okay. Uh, so almost coming back to to where we uh, where we were in that first question, um, are there any are there any tools out there when it comes to 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 post that? you wish have been invented already um and and maybe it goes back to your first answer which is mobile because i know you're you're big in that you know you're right. you've, got to, you've got to keep your photos with you there's a lot of client interaction going but any anything that hasn't been invented yet yeah the automatic calling tool <laughs> push a button and it just goes through all the images and picks the best ones based on uh, what it knows is your taste and you're done. That's it. Hit a button and off it goes. No, I don't know. Um, there are so many amazing tools out there right now. It's a, it's a fantastic time. It's funny because when I've, I've come from a wet darkroom background, I started out, you know, in high school and I've been making photos since I'm 12 years old. I had a dark room in my bedroom closet. And I mean, I've, I, and I never thought that I would be, uh, I was dyed in the wool silver guy, silver gel and silver guy, and I never ever thought that I would be a digital. And it's I'm like, and I have lots of film cameras, but I'm I, I never shoot them. I'm 100% digital, uh, just because it's such an amazing time to be making images with the digital tools. There's so many wonderful tools available. Um, so aside from just, and I, uh, you know, I don't really do weddings that much anymore. Um, but when I was processing really large amounts of images, that culling process is, was really daunting. Um, and of course you can job it out and there's lots of arguments for doing that. Uh, but you know, just dealing with large amounts of images can take a lot of time. So I always had wished for the automatic culling tool. That's uh, you know what, it's a good wish. And you know, it, it's funny because I think that that speaks to almost everybody, whether whether they're doing, whether somebody's doing this professionally or not. Right. Uh, I think you, we, you know, I see people that go out and they're not doing it professionally. They're just, they just love photography and they go to a cool place and they're taking pictures, but they, they're still taking a lot of pictures. And I, I'd be willing to get bet that not everybody's getting through all those pictures. Like we all, even when, when you're probably taking pictures on your own personal reasons, we know the sweet spot in the photo shoot and we go there and we grab a picture and we share it and it's like we get our instant fix. And right. then I don't know that we ever get to look at those hundreds of photos that we might have taken, you know? Right. And the time that it takes then to work on them and then hopefully, you know, people are doing some printing. Printing is wonderful. Um, you know, I encourage people to print. Um, but yeah, I mean, and that's why having tools that help expedite the process is really uh, essential. Yeah. All right. Next one. So. On average, um, on average, what, how much time do you does it take you to like? This is this is the shot from the photo shoot. All right, this is the shot, not just a quick image I'm going to throw up on Facebook. Or, or you, know, you can even answer to that too. On average, though, what would you time wise to 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 post process a photo where they've hired you to to do it? They're not going to just hand it off to a retoucher. Sure. Well, it's really going to depend on what kind of images, whether it's an editorial portrait or whether it's a beauty or fashion. Beauty, of course, is going to take the most time because it's going to require a high level of retouching where every little pore and detail is super important. That could take anywhere from an hour to three hours uh, for an image. Um, you know, and typically an editorial is, is more like, you know, 10 images. So I don't put as much time into each image, maybe a half hour. Uh, maybe an hour, maybe 15 minutes. It really depends. The one thing that I will say is I'm big into you know lighting, um, and the the it's sort of the you know quality and quality out uh, equation. If you have a quality image going in, and if you've done a good job capturing it in camera, uh, with your lighting, with your exposure, with your composition, etc., paying attention to what's going on in all aspects of what's happening in your viewfinder, um, typically there's a lot less work on the back end that's due. 
Yeah. You know, so I'm big into you know trying to get it right in camera and really having my lighting right and all the rest of it. So that helps a lot. Definitely. Um, all right. So uh, kind of the last question. Um, what? Uh, so I I look at I look at post and I think other people kind of can see it this way too. I look at it as we have Photoshop, which is like. I consider Photoshop like heavy pixel pushing. You know, I've got brushes and I've got these artistic brushes and I've got layers and channels and uh, masks and all these filters and, and just all kinds of different things. Liquify filter and artistic filters and blurs and all that stuff. Um, and then I think we have our raw editors, which there's some overlap, you know, they, there's, you can do a little bit of a blur and certain things like that. And some, some things have layering and whatnot, but much, much pared down set of tools. Right. All right. So your next photo shoot, you finish. And I say, okay, dude, you can, are you a capture one user? Do I remember? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you use capture one. So put that in place of Lightroom. All right. Um, so next, next photo shoot, you finish. I say, okay, dude, you can only use capture one or Photoshop. What are you going to pick? Capture one. Yeah. Yeah, because well, because the the raw conversion. I mean, especially you know, predominantly I shoot phase one, and that software is optimized. You know, it works with all DSLRs, and it's great. But it's really the algorithms for the conversions are specifically work beautifully, are tailor made for phase one. So I'm going to get a better conversion at a base layer, mm -hmm. uh, at capture one, than I will out of ACR. Um, so, and again, I really try not to do so much heavy duty pixel pushing to use your term. Um, you know, I mean, aside from certain beauty things that are necessary for beauty and fashion, but, uh, you know, ideally like with a lot of the portrait work, it's, I, I have every, I have everything that I need yeah. with, uh, um, with capture one and it's an amazing piece of software. Well, yeah. And you know what I've been uh, at, we, when we talked last, um, I hadn't, it been a long time since I tried it out, and and I went and I downloaded it after after we talked. It's there's a lot of neat stuff in it. Yeah, it's different when you you know when you're getting into it from Lightroom. It takes some getting used to because it's not Lightroom, and it's hard to not look at it through that prism. And you expect it to do certain things, but it, it's really pretty amazing software in it on, on its own. Yeah. All right. So I said send my last question. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one more quick one okay, in. Go for it. Yeah, it's more. It's more so keep in mind a lot of people watching this are kind of just starting out in in the, the the photography area. You know, they go out and shoot, they love to shoot, post process a little bit. Any um, and even if they have been doing it for five, six, seven years, any any advice to people, you know, like just pitfalls that you got into that you'd love to see other people not have to get into. Uh, I would just say not so much pitfalls, but I would just say, you know, uh, let taste be your guide. Like, don't go overboard. Like, really try to approach it with a light hand. Uh, think of it like you as you use spices in your kitchen. I mean, too much, just the right amount is great, and it's really easy to cross that line, and all of a sudden it's over-seasoned. It's too much. So, uh, you know, approach it with a light hand uh, and really – Try not to make your images effects based, but try to make them image based, for lack of a better term. You know, like let the images speak for themselves. Use the effects, use the what you're doing in post to help support your original idea or the intent of the photograph. Um, and leave and I say leave well enough alone. You know, don't don't kill it, don't overdo it. Yeah, that, that's a great point. If, if I could if I could throw something onto it because it just. Because I think the the spice analogy is a great one, and you know if I'm somebody out there and I'm listening to that, I'm saying, okay, well, you know if I'm learning to cook, then how do I know what how much is too too much or a little spice? You taste it, right? You taste it, and also at the other, you have other people taste it, right? Because what you said is it's such such great advice. You know, it, it's at some point you have to develop a taste for this stuff right. and it doesn't come that only comes from doing it and you trying it out and having other people look at your work and kind of figuring out where, where your style fits in there, whether you're pro or not pro. I think, I think everybody can benefit from looking around that photography and just absolutely figuring out where your style fits in. Absolutely. And your style today is going to be very different than it is five years from now. And you know, things all develop and uh, progress. So, you know, just, uh, just try to keep learning. 
dude, that's what makes it fun. And honestly, man, I'll be honest. That's why I still have a job. Right. Exactly. There you go. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, five years ago, I, I mean, exposure shadows and highlights haven't changed in five years. Right. You know? if, and that's, it's because people's taste change and it's fun. Right. And, uh, and I think it allows for growth. So, uh, so cool. Right. Man. Well, how, uh, what's, what's the best place for uh, people to find out a little bit more about you? Uh, well, I just kind of soft launched my commercial site, so definitely check that out. That's michaelcorsentino.com. And you can check me out on Instagram and Twitter at, at Corsentino, C-O-R-S-E-N-T-I-N-O. Uh, and we'll have all those links. Those links all be on the website where they're watching this. So Excellent. Good deal. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I know everybody uh, everybody's a fan, and uh, I've always I've always followed your work for, for a very long time. And, and very nice. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks for the opportunity. Enjoyed chatting with you. All right, man. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. Take care.